Okay. Hey, well, there's something weird going on here. No, remember last week we were talking about the discrepancy on time. Like, I bet you're thinking that our podcast was about an hour and 10 minutes, right? That's what I got. But the timer on um, Zoom says 123. And remember yes. last week. Yeah, we, I do remember that. I don't <laughs> we know got what that into is. a little little argument there. Oh, yeah, it's a tussle. <laughs> a little tussle. <laughs> we, if we were together, we would have wrestled right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man so we didn't hit uh, much in the way of current events uh we no didn't. no we didn't and and so There's much has though. happened yeah oh, it was, it was Biden's great first big speech in to congress bombs on all counts that's uh, uh the new york post did you watch it oh, oh, the, no the new york no. post no the new york no? post said that then i looked up cnn Oh, and all the grades gripping. They had, oh yeah, like twenty people uh, with their three paragraph review of it, and at the end, A, A minus, you know, all the way through. And one person scored it as a D because I'm sure he wanted to stand out and make it. Huh. But I couldn't, um, I couldn't believe how they 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 just fawned all over that yeah. whole thing, and I I just thought it was. It, it, I couldn't watch it. I tried to watch I, it. I can't watch him. It's, I couldn't it's, watch it's, Trump though. I can. I know. Watch I know you couldn't. I, yeah. I. I felt like it's. It's interesting that you can't watch either one of them. Um, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, because I. I know that. I mean, you watch CNN and you'd think anybody that's a Democrat just loved this, and you know, and here it's not. That's not the case. Uh, you know, it, at least you, you don't feel that way. Um, but uh, gosh, it's just painful to hear that, you know, the systemic racism has had a knee on my throat, um, you know, the, all of my life. That's what Joe Biden said about black people. And I, I just don't, I don't, I, mean, I don't agree with that premise whatsoever. And so I, I can't, I can't look at America as systemically racist. I love this country. I know we've had our problems, but the whole platform that he comes out with is that, America is racist, and that we our biggest problem is is uh, policing, and and uh, you know just systemic racism all around. And I it just this is the it, Manchurian candidate, buddy. They Boy. got to him. They put a, a nanobite in him or something and took over his brain. Uh, this is not who he like was that. through his whole career. Well, it's and not I'll, who he campaigned uh, that he was going to be either. And you, here you have AOC coming out last week and saying that yeah. uh, Joe Biden has surpassed all of her expectations. Yes. And it's like, OK, well, that's horrifying. Yeah, it is. Boy, that is not a very smart woman there. No, mm -hmm. not at all. I mean, gosh, she's no. uh, it, it, it's a, it, she's ne she never ceases to amaze me. And the thing <laughs> well, there's that out of her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Joe Biden never ceases to amaze me either. Because yeah. I mean, I just I listen to him and I think, how in the world did this guy make it to be the president? I have yeah. a hard time understanding what he's saying because he's jumbling a lot of his words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like they replaced him with a slightly malfunctioning robot. Well, yeah, exactly. And, you know, you take a look. I looked at the highlights of the speech because it was just painful to watch this. But, you know, here we have this border crisis. He said nothing about the border. Um, he uh, he's actually talked about uh, legalizing six million dreamers as citizens. And uh, he blamed Trump for he did blame Trump for the problem at the border. And, and we heard from his administration that um, this week that the problems are really caused, the problems that's causing all this immigration are gangs, corruption, and climate change. <laughs> okay, um, we, we've got some pretty big gang problems here. In Los Angeles, they just got rid of the, the gang uh, unit, the special gang unit in Los right. Angeles. I mean, this Crazy. is the home of the Bloods and the Crips, right? Yeah. They, they live here. Right. And so you're going to, I'm, I'm just thinking about these people that are moving up from, you know, Central America to a better way. And they're trying to and they're saying they're leaving gangs, but they're coming into Los Angeles where we're not even policing the gang. Why would if that's why they're coming, why would they come here for that? I, does, none of this explanation. Global warming is causing people to migrate up here. Aren't we experiencing global warming? Haven't we been talking about that? I don't understand any of these explanations. Oh, Nothing's somebody, making any sense. Somebody was uh, 
I don't remember who on a podcast uh, was explaining what's going on at the, oh, oh, it was, um, uh, and I'm not through the podcast. Dan Crenshaw is on Rogan oh, again. Yeah. Guy yeah, with the eye like, patch. Yeah, I really Oh, like he's him. so smart. I, he's I hope he very runs. Very common sense, yes. Yeah, I hope he runs for president. Me uh, too. He, he was talking about how things work at the border, that the cartel really controls the border. And yes. they charge $300 a head to get people through there. And uh, $300 ahead, if I said that right. I thought I yeah, said you did. 300. You said it Okay. Right. Yeah. So that's, I mean, they're, they're making millions and millions off of the whole border. They are. That's what I've heard. So, yeah. Yeah. Not only that, but um, these cartels are doing other terrible things as well. We've heard of these children that have been brutally raped oh, yeah. uh, coming, coming across and also uh, children being used as, uh, as drug mules and, uh, we're, we're just hearing about a terrible, terrible crisis disaster that's happening with just terrible human rights violations yeah. being happening to these people on the way to the border. It's created this terribly unsafe situation. And yet it seems like our current administration only wants to blame the last administration yeah. and, 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 and the press seems to capitulate and, and just leave it alone. They're not, uh, they don't seem to be doing anything about it. I, I, there's your conspiracy. I don't know what else to say. Biden all of a sudden changes into a different person when he gets in office. Yeah. You no, know, I mean, what the media is like they don't even now that they got their guy in there they don't even have they don't have any ratings because they're not even reporting any real news you know People well that's report. that's right that's right so how are how i don't understand how this is sustainable and then you've got, and I brought it up in the last segment, is that there's only 200 people there. The place seats 1,600. Everybody's wearing a mask. You know, almost every one of them had to have already been, uh, um, had their vaccination. Uh, I know that uh, Biden, Harris, and, and Pelosi have all had their vaccinations. We have the announcements by the CDC about how safe things are, and yet they're wearing their masks and um it, 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 it's very silent. It was a really surreal type of a thing. And here's the last thing I'll say. When you think about freedom in America being the, the, the shining house on the hill that supposedly everybody should be emulating. Um, and uh, all the way up until a year ago, masks were seen as a negative thing. We, we look at third world societies where women are completely covered up or, or they have some kind of veil over their face. And I don't know, when I turned on the TV the other day and I saw Joe Biden speaking, it's, it is a, a new thing to see the Speaker of the House and the Vice President behind the president and they're both women and one of them is black that that's a that but then they're both wearing masks this is it was just an odd picture barry theater now if you want to go the other way uh, on that you should turn on the draft tonight just to look it's in cleveland and yeah. it is oh my god it's it's so spectacular but I was also immediately taken with, I had to call my buddy, Dan. I was like, it's packed. There's, it is loaded with people. I'm like, how did they get away with that? And what he a said, contrast. They all had to pr show proof of vac vaccination. Okay. Uh, but still, yeah, what a contrast. And again, did you see, I only saw like pictures of a short article that I didn't read, but because I can't stand her, but Kamala Harris doing an interview with somebody and they're like 60 feet apart in her I room. I did see that. Wearing yeah. masks. This is just ridiculousness. And I just think, Merle, that it's it's enough that they, they know what they're doing. Then Yes, they, they do. It's enough that they get a small percentage of radicals stirred up and just keep, that's all it takes to keep the smoke screen going. Yeah. Well, look, what is the end game? And to me, it seems pretty obvious that government they're takeover. desperate to lose the control that they gained from COVID. Mm, and they yeah. want to they want to parlay that into the future. They do not want that to go away. Look at the look at the dictatorial powers that are federal and state governments have been able to amass as mm. a result of the fear that they created. And here's the other problem is that we're seeing that um, that the vaccinations were on this great pace, 
but now uh, it is slowed down, uh, down about 20%. And, and what that means um, over the last uh, few months is that really a couple million people that would have been vaccinated have not been vaccinated. And it started with this whole um, putting a pause on the vaccination right around that time. One of the, what was it? AstraZeneca or one of them. We right, had to right. put a pause on because of blood clots. But you've got that and you've got the people that have been vaccinated and the government wearing sometimes two masks. You've got Fauci out there talking about yeah. how, you know, we do, yeah, you've been vaccinated, but you still want to wear your mask and don't get around people and all this other stuff. Well, it seems like the message is that the vaccination uh, doesn't work or or something like they they put all kinds of fear into this that that now people just aren't getting it. And um, I, I think that, you know, having this theater where you've got Kamala Harris, who's been vaccinated, sitting 100 feet away from the person that's interviewing her, yeah. um, it, 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 you, the optics are not are not ridiculous uh, towards people getting a vaccination. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure you're right about that. No, that's ridiculous. They're always going to, uh, you got to press it all the way from, okay, we could try to be careful. We could try to have nice optics into way overboard, you know, into the realm of ridiculousness. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I wanted to follow up on something that I talked about last week, which was the, the post office. And remember, it was Yahoo, yeah. Yahoo News that came out with this whole thing about the Postal Service is running a covert operations program that monitors American social media posts. And I was saying, hey, let's be careful on this one. It came oh, out. You know. Wait, what you said was it was hilarious. You go, well, if the post, post office is spying on you, you're probably pretty, <laughs> pretty safe. safe. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's it's true you know i mean they'll they'll be here tomorrow or next week or maybe next month but they'll, yeah. they'll be here here's, a, here's a tracking number yeah. <laughs> yeah here's a tracking number but uh but this week we have um a uh, a report that's come out by uh the daily wire is following up on this one they're saying that the the united states postal service admits to monitoring america's social media via covert operations program and uh and so it's true uh let's see here if i've got anything good on this yeah analysts with the united states post office inspection service internet covert operations program or icop monitored significant activity regarding planned protests occurring internationally and domestically on march 20th and they go on to say that they uh they this is an ongoing thing and as i mentioned it's pretty interesting that they're using the the postal service for this when well, they got the fbi and the cia, CIA nsa uh, yeah. yeah so I, the postal service too we got to be paranoid of the post the post guy i mean the the mailman yeah yeah i don't i don't understand that at all but it it's valid i mean it looks valid well, so. when you when you combine the fact that they could look at your social media and they have your mail so that they can see if they needed to they could look at any kind of correspondence that you're getting or or prevent correspondence from coming to your house uh it becomes sort of 1984 ish uh oh, yeah. utopia is sort of orwellian right so so keep an eye on this this is I, I just you know especially when you take a look at the post office that's always been you know billions of dollars in debt and yeah. they don't they just don't have a, efficiency is not a, something that you would describe the post office as uh the fact that they're tracking us is weird now here's something on a personal level barry that uh, really gets me. And then that is that I, I was having a problem with my mail being stolen at one point. And Ooh, uh, I went down scary. to the post. Yeah, it is scary. And I went down to the post office and I got these guys, the United States Postal Inspect Inspection Service, to I filled out a report for them to investigate this. And weeks and weeks went by and I didn't hear anything from them. And so finally I went to the post office uh, the, in, to, to inquire about it. And I got a big run around of course, yeah. and nothing got done. And, and so I finally got a, a, a letter like three months later that said, we looked into it and nothing. Thank you. 
yeah. yeah. So, I'm not surprised. So, so they don't want to look into that, but yeah. they'll spy on my social. They got time to spy on my social media. Here's the other thing too, Barry, is it in the articles that we're seeing, it seems like they're very pointed towards uh, the conservative movements. Oh, of course. Not at all at, uh, at left-leaning movements whatsoever. Sure. In fact, this one thing that they were going at, it's uh, uh, they were monitoring this event on March 20th. That was an event to win our freedoms back uh, due to the, the COVID lockdowns worldwide. And they saw that as a conservative event that they had to you know, inform. Uh, and that's the thing. They're not just collecting this information. They're informing other government entities mm -hmm. of your activities. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is getting pretty scary. It I don't is. know. For some reason, though, I have faith. Um, it's things, I love that. It's things like uh, seeing Jordan Peterson and, and other and, and Joe Rogan and all that get millions and millions of views and listening to Peterson talk about the absolute thirst for real knowledge and in-depth long form interviews. Uh, when we've come from decades of everybody thinking, no, people need it shorter and shorter, quick snippets, you know, MTV generation, quick cuts, uh, can only take so much. And there's a lot of, I don't know, probably the majority, maybe the majority of people in America are like that, but the ones, the ones, oh yeah, another thing Crenshaw was talking about was the voting stuff. Because I was thinking how the Democrats always want everybody under the sun to be able to vote, like in saying that minorities uh, uh, shouldn't need an ID, that that's racist and all that, which is so inflammatory right there. That's racist. It's totally racist. And anything that can drum up uh, some a, a way to commit fraud, the Democrats are all for, and Crenshaw is also right. He says the same thing you and I do. ID equals a vote, you know, yeah. easy peasy. That's it. And um, so anyways, I think that, you know, the Democrats, what the Democrats are saying is they want the dumbest of the dumb, the lowest common denominator, anybody that we can get uh, the lower uh, that we can put in there, they will vote for us. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah you're right. And they, if you take a look at what's happening on the border right now, I mean, out here in California, Barry, if you cross that border, you can get a driver's license here in California and you get a driver's license, you're automatically registered to vote. And they know that. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this is a, a plan. It seems like this is a coordinated plan on many different fronts to yeah. cause our country to be a single party system in per, per, perpetuity and um, bringing the, the border crisis is part of the plan because now we've got they, they're saying over a million people are going to come across the border this year and all of those people are going to be able to vote well that changes the voting dynamics in, uh, in all over the place and especially at this time the democrats need this because after the census happened what we're seeing is that uh, there are several states that are typically Democrat states that are that are losing representation in Congress uh, because of the census. So uh, we have, uh, let's see here, Texas gains two House seats while New York and California are among the losers. So several of these uh, Democrat states that have been Democrat states are losing uh, uh, representatives in the House due to the census. Remember, the census controls yeah. what, what your representation is in the House. And right now, this is and going to your faith statement, which I love, by the way, um, this is going to have an impact on the, the next House election, which is coming up in a year and a half. Uh, because it, right now we have such a close margin. There's 218 Democrats, 212 Republicans. So the Democrats have a six seat lead, but they're about to lose several seats, which is going to cause this thing to be very even, even more closely even. And with the moves that the Democrats have been making, which are now seen as very unpopular, going after racism for everything. Yeah. Um, they're really in a, a very vicarious situation looking at the uh, midterm elections. Yeah, totally agree. All right. And when we take okay. a look at this, it, it's interesting, Barry, because you have certain things that are happening at the same time, like, for instance, in Florida, 
You have uh, new voting laws that uh, that just happened in Florida that are very similar to the ones in Georgia. Of course, the the Democrats are attacking that. They don't want anything like fairness at the at the right. uh, uh, election booth. More but- murky the better. But also Ron DeSantis also signed into law a pro-law enforcement anti-riot bill, which includes several things to prevent these uh, ongoing riots from happening. It allows the state to circumvent local authority and punish municipalities that attempt to reduce or eliminate funding for law enforcement. Look at Seattle and what happened over there where we've got uh, 200 police officers that just quit. Uh, oh, yeah. They can't even respond to 911 calls anymore over there. Uh, it allows businesses to da- uh, businesses damaged or destroyed in lootings or riots to sue municipalities that don't provide law enforcement protection. It increases legal charges for people who assault anyone, particularly law enforcement or damaged property during a riot. It revises the prohibition on obstructing traffic by standing on the street. I love that one. And uh, oh, by the way, the punishment for that is, is huge for doing that. It prohibits protesters from using or threatening the use of imminent force against another person and requires a person arrested for rioting to be held in custody until their first appearance in court. So no more of this. Uh, you just you know burned down a building or you just looted uh, all this stuff or you just beat this guy up and we're going to let you go tonight and, and please come back. That's not going to happen there. I really see this as a, uh, a blueprint for cities to be able to prevent this from happening. Of course, the Democrats are all over this. They're saying somehow this is a racist thing to do, sure. but I, I just don't see that. Yeah, I don't I don't even know what to say to that. So I saw something about uh, the poor. I didn't read the article. I saw the headline. Portland mayor is uh, turning, making a turnaround on on his policies or something like that. What's going on in Portland? Yeah, so uh, this is interesting. I saw that this morning, too. Let me pull up the article. Um, This is uh, um, an interesting thing that I think it's going to be interesting to find out how this all is going to work out. The um, Antifa threat against Portland mayor gets FBI involved. The group also gave out the mayor's home address. And um, let's see, this is from the Post Millennial. Let's see if I can pull this up real quick. Journalists linked to Antifa death threat video against Mayor Ted Wheeler. Uh, The Portland Police Bureau with assistance from the FBI are investigating a video death threat made against Mayor Ted Wheeler by a self-described Antifa collective. And so, uh, so that's what's going on over there. I mean, this guy has been notorious for supporting all of the protests, even as they burned down his, uh, his the city, yeah. the businesses, as they attack federal buildings. They've been doing this nonstop. Uh, he's really done a terrible, terrible job of being a leader of a but city. But they elected him. So, but I I don't know what he campaigned on, Barry. And, you know, we just talked about Joe Biden campaigning on a person that's going to bring unity and that he's a model. Then he, then he came in as the Manchurian candidate. Could that have happened with Ted Wheeler too? I, I, I don't know. But, but if he were saying that he was going to do this kind of stuff before he got elected, who would elect him? I mean, well, I guess I guess I look at it that way too. Why am I not hearing about uh, petitions going around for a recall of him then? It, it, this is interesting, Barry, because I I wonder the same thing. I don't know the answer to that. However, here's something that was in the news just this week: is here in California, we found out that there is a company called uh, SDK Knickerbocker that was hired by the state government to censor information pre-election about uh, negative information about mail-in voting. And um, in fact, uh, that same organization was hired by Joe Biden and uh, they were able to, we saw the censorship that happened there with Joe Biden. What I'm saying here is that it's possible that this type of information may have been held back from the news or censored. We can't discount the fact that they are now in charge of the news that we're able to see. 
And uh, I bet this is this is fast becoming a world where it's very hard to get the truth. And I, I think it this is. goes back to Jordan Peterson too. And what you were talking about is that in the lack at, or absence of truth, there is a great thirst for truth out there. Yeah. And for people that can put out the truth, those people are, are finding that they're, they're becoming rising stars. Yeah, no, very true. And, um, and the, mainstream media continues to plummet in ratings that's the kind of really stuff does. that gives me hope you know it, uh, it gives me hope too i yeah. i would agree with you and i i really feel like because our 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 really at least our government is like a pendulum moving back yeah. and forth between you know liberal and conservative i think because of the radical moves that have been made over the last a uh, couple of months here that um, we're going to see a, a a jolt to the other side as well. So mm -hmm. I, I have I have hope on on that as well. I, I wanted to bring up something that I've been watching that is pretty concerning to me, um, especially as we talk about uh, these uh, these things that are happening these days, but. Um, you know, going back to that January 6th thing that happened that, that's really changed our society quite a bit. It turns out that several of the people that have been that were arrested in association with the Capitol uh, debacle that happened on the 6th are are still in prison being held without bond and have not been able to see uh, see they haven't had a trial. They haven't been able to see a judge. And not only that they have been kept, uh, there's a story here that shows about 36 people that have been kept ever since then in solitary confinement. Oh my God. So when you think about solitary confinement, this is mental torment. It's torture. Um, it's, it, you could argue that it's torture. These people are only allowed to see the light of day one hour a day where they have to get all of their exercise in. This is where they can see other people or talk to their attorneys, but that's it. The rest of the time they're in solitary confinement. Hmm. And uh, one of them was released this past week who said that he had been beaten by uh, prison guards uh, saying that they didn't like white people. Um, so we're, we're seeing this, uh, this happen. And, um, and two of these people that have been arrested were said to have killed uh, Brian Swetnick. And Brian Swetnick was the police officer that uh, was reported that he was killed by the, the folks that had broken into the Capitol. And specifically, two of these men that had been held in, in, in solitary confinement were said to have killed him using a powerful chemical that he was sprayed with. At first, it was said that he was hit in the head with a fire extinguisher. Then it was said that this bear spray, and you're seeing it in a lot of these protests. It's, it's like a mist, but it's, it's mm. the power, it is a powerful chemical. I mean, uh, this, is, this actually deters bears from attacking you if you were to spray it. And they, they're saying these two guys sprayed Brian Swetnick in the face, and that, that later led to his demise. And these, then therefore, they, they're still in solid confinement. But just last week, uh, the uh, coroner came out and said that Brian Swetnick died of natural causes, that he had a, two strokes, and that's what killed him. And so, uh, but still, these two guys are in solitary confinement. And when you start to look at that compared to all of the the, the mayhem that has happened since June of last year, where we've seen our cities burn up, we've seen looting and, 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 and just terrible violence in the street. These people get let go sometimes that night when they've been captured. They've been damaging and attacking federal buildings and federal officers, and they get let go right away. How is that not as bad as, I mean, it's the, the Capitol's a federal building. It's just, it's not really any different. So why are they treated differently? Meanwhile, Rudy Giuliani's uh, apartment gets raided uh, when he's been cooperating with the law regarding their investigations. And we saw what happened with Flynn and we saw what happened with Roger Stone. When is Donald Trump gonna be raided and they're gonna drag him away? We saw what happened to Parler and, and we saw what happened to Trump where uh, he was actually deplatformed when he was still the president. 
it seems like uh, um, that these moves are radical and the country has to wake up and see this because this is a slap in the face to America. And going back to your faith thing, Barry, it seems like this all leads back to a good place when we finally you know, like snap out of it. Yeah, I just looked uh, this up. The whole solitary confinement thing caught me as that's uh, sounds like that could be politicized. So I Googled it and I came up with a Politico uh, article, which is a fairly left link, left, very left, left leaning uh, from your point of view, from my point of view, it's fairly left. Um, so little difference there. Capital riot suspects held in DC are in quotes, restrictive housing. And so it supports what you're saying. Here's the first paragraph. All suspects detained in all suspects detained in the Washington, in Washington, DC on charges stemming from the June, January 6th surge of the Capitol are being treated as quotes, maximum security prisoners and are held in quotes, restrictive housing district officials revealed this week. That's serious. It is. And uh, that that restrictive housing thing too is such an oxymoron. Like, oh, restrictive housing. Well, that sounds like prison. It's solitary. That's like uh, the kids in cages versus uh, Biden. Yeah. What what do they call it? Kids at play or something. (laughs) Recess. Right, right. Yeah, it's all semantics. They're always re-terming everything as they need to. Yeah. So it's happening, and yeah. uh, and we know that it's happening, and it's a the, this is the double standard that's happening. And uh, meanwhile, Hunter Biden, with all the troubles that he's had, uh, we've seen, we now know that he committed a felony with his uh, with the gun that he that he purchased uh, by lying on the application. That's a felony. We know that. We have the record. We know we have lots of evidence and what he did with Burisma and uh, also with the Chinese partners that he had. And yet he is moving on to a college position where he's going to be an assistant professor talking about the fake media. And meanwhile, you've got- Oh my God, what, is, what kind of angle is he going to come from? I don't know, but meanwhile, you got people like Flynn, Stone. Uh, now you've got, uh, you know, the ex-mayor of, uh, of New York, Rudy Giuliani. Mm. Now these guys are all staring at potential prison. And meanwhile, Hunter Biden gets a, gets a pass on everything. Well, um, he's so indebted to the media that he's going, he's going to be a total, I, I don't know, a parrot for whatever they want him to say. You know, I mean, I, I, what, first off, what college would hire him to? What, are you kidding? You know, Almost any one of them. But, but what, how can you? <laughs> I, I know what you're saying. And yeah. I agree. But at the same time, it's like, what? what how is this academia? Yeah. I don't know, Merle. I think we should start wrapping up, but maybe AI will get us out of this predicament with all the stupidity that... uh... I got one more thing that we should talk about, and that is, uh, have you seen what's happening with John Kerry? Oh, vaguely, vaguely. Okay, well, it's a pretty big story. It, um, so the uh, the guy that um, that John Kerry was negotiating with during the Iran uh, nuclear deal, uh, his name is Mohammed Zaved Zarif, and uh, he is a pretty notorious guy. But he he was recording an interview for posterity in Iran. And uh, it was a seven hour interview, as a matter of fact, in which he uh, made some statements about John Kerry. This was supposed to be sealed until after his death. Well, somehow some of the information leaked out and the information that leaked out was that um, John Kerry had uh, had given him, let's see, Kerry shocked Zarif by revealing that Israel had attacked Iranian targets in Syria more than 200 times, according to the leaked audio. So he's giving information to this guy for uh, this official at Iran regarding Israel's secret covert operations. And to make matters worse, he was doing it in 2017 and 2018 when he wasn't even the Secretary of State. And we remember that Roger 
uh, uh, Flynn got uh, prosecuted for the Logan Act, and that was because he was talking to a Russian ambassador in in the uh, the transition between uh, Obama and Trump, and so they ruined his life for doing that. John Kerry's over there, not only. Um, working on behalf of the United States with this uh, official from Iran when he doesn't have an official job, but he's given away uh, uh, secrets according to this person. Now, is it true? I have no idea. Uh, it's just like Iran to put information that's a lie out there in order mm -hmm. to trip up. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, let's say, for instance, the Biden administration. We saw where uh, Israeli, I'm sorry, uh, Iranian boats were harassing an American ship in the uh, in, in the uh, Hermosa Straits uh, just this past week. So it seems like the Iranians might be testing the Biden administration. But if this is true about John Kerry, that's big trouble for John carry mm -hmm. yeah, and totally. also uh, i think big trouble for uh i think the biden uh administration would have a lot of cleanup to have to do here yeah it'll get buried in no time yeah. i hope not hope not yeah. <clears throat> yeah i think it would yeah i mean we constantly see that i i remember the big 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 news on obamagate that just fizzled out. Uh, yeah. Hunter Biden keeps disappearing. That that all those stories disappear. Uh, well, and, the and Clintons, Hillary yeah. bleaches servers, nothing. Bill Bill gets caught uh, confronting the Attorney General on the tarmac uh, during the investigation. Nothing. Yeah. No obstructed yeah. justice. Nothing. Nah, and, and what about that uh, special counsel that counsel that's out there investigating Hunter Biden and Burisma? He's still out there. Um, but I mean, what, are we going to hear anything? How no. how do they get away with this? That's deep state stuff there. Yeah, and it's, yeah. the media is complicit with it. Totally. I agree. The media has a do job and a duty to, you know, it's like a small scale. Like he, out here, we've always had Carl Monday, the investigative reporter. Oh, yeah. And so that's, you know, he's always knocking on the door. Oh, man, it's Carl Monday. I'm busted. You know, <laughs> that's what the media is supposed to do on a large scale. They are. You know? You're exactly right. Right. And, and that's their that's actually their constitutional duty, according to the First Amendment. And that. Yeah. And you're supposed to get personal rewards and uh, excel in your career by being that young reporter that sleuths out this stuff. That's right. But now. Oh, no. Oh, no. Quite the opposite. You play ball. You'll do fine. Just sit back. You don't have to worry about a thing that right. I always say that uh, Saga and uh, Crystal both said yep. that. Yeah, you know, she yeah. was in a left. She was in MSNBC. He was on Fox, and they're yeah, they both they got their talking points. Yeah, that's serious. That's serious and sad. And uh, we've got to we've got to win that back. It's just yeah. no question about it. That that and is a are. main part of the fight that we're in is winning back the freedom of the press because yeah, right now we're corrupted. And it's moving to, as we talk about podcasts like this and so many others, and that's where we can talk freely for now, but this all ties into the stuff that you guys are talking about on cyber talk where, man, I mean, they're going to be like, I am sure we're on an algorithm that is getting less uh, push. Oh, than absolutely. Others. So, yep. you know, all of that has to be dealt with too. It's the truth. Yep, yeah. It's the truth. Well, We'll have to deal with it next time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. Well, I, I hope you have a great weekend. Yeah, uh, you too. This has been great, Barry, as yeah. usual, stimulating conversation. Always. I'm looking forward to the next one. Tell Irby that I yeah. said hello and hello Absolutely. from the, all of our fans here at 050. And uh, I, I, I pray, uh, it, I have it in my prayers uh, constantly that uh, his son's uh, murderer will be brought to justice. I know yes. God knows who that is and they're not getting away with anything. You know, Jordan Peterson always says you don't get, he goes, you don't, you don't get away with anything. No. Uh, you don't get away with a crime. You don't get away from cheating yourself or because it all comes back on you. It sure does. You, it eats you up in a variety of different ways. Um, and he says that all the time. And he says that as a clinical psychologist, as that, my, Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, as well, my dad, 
Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, as my dad used to say, peace of mind is the most valuable sought after thing in human history. Correct. Yeah, it's very good. All right. On, on that note, let, let's part. Uh, can't wait to see you next week. Love you, bro. You too, Barry. Love right, you too. Bye.